If you post content on your Facebook business page, you're gonna to wanna to know how to use the Facebook publishing tools and the best practices to use when it comes to posting on Facebook. So I'm covering both of those things in this video, plus the layout and features of Facebook's publishing tools have changed even since just the start of this year. So keep watching to make sure you're up to date on everything and maximizing the reach and engagement on your Facebook posts. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. Before we get started, please go ahead and like this video for me, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the business growing videos we put out every single week. All right, so for today, we're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna screen share and walk you through how to use Facebook's publishing tools. So let's start with how to create and schedule a post. On your desktop, looking at your business page, scroll down the toolbar on the left-hand side and click publishing tools. It should bring you to a screen like this and you can hit the blue create post button. Use the text box to input your caption and use the media tools to upload one or multiple photos or a video. Now, if you stay to the end of the video, I'm gonna share some of the best practices for you to follow when writing your caption and selecting your creatives. But for now, I'm just gonna put some filler here for the sake of showing you. If you have your Instagram account connected, you can check the box there to create a post for Instagram as well. If you don't have your Instagram connected yet, you can back out to your main page again, scroll down to settings, click Instagram, and then follow the prompts to connect it from there. If you select both, the creative will be published on both Facebook and Instagram, but you can customize the text to have one version published on Facebook and one on Instagram. And that's helpful for a few reasons, one being that you cannot put links in your Instagram caption. So if you're referring to a link in your copy, you'll usually want to refer to the link in the bio for Instagram while putting the actual URL in the Facebook copy. Another reason is that while you can use hashtags in your Facebook copy, they're more commonly used on Instagram. So oftentimes you'll want to include up to 30 hashtags on Instagram and maybe one to three on Facebook. You can also add the location and this will appear on both platforms. And all changes you make will update in real time in the preview window on the right. If you're wanting to publish right now, you can hit the blue publish button. If you're wanting to schedule it for later, Hit the drop down arrow and hit schedule or save it as a draft if you want to resume working on it later. Now, one thing I did want to be transparent about here is if you add multiple photos, in my personal experience, it's been a little finicky with publishing on Instagram. You're technically supposed to be able to click that editing pencil and crop the photos so that they appear correctly on both Facebook and Instagram. With Facebook, it's not really an issue, but since Instagram automatically publishes the perfect square size unless adjusted otherwise, you need to edit the pictures if they're more horizontal or vertical to ensure the images are not being cut off. But as you can see on my screen, even if you apply the changes and save them, it doesn't actually save them. So just keep that in mind if you need to publish multiple images on Instagram that are not perfectly square. All right, next I wanna look at the layout of these tools. But first, here's a quick message from Sherman. Hey, we just helped a small business make over $1.5 million through Facebook advertising. And after managing millions of dollars in ad spend for thousands of different small businesses, we have decided to give away everything we learned to you in a special program. If you wanna learn the blueprint to success, the best practices from some of the fastest growing companies in the world, and all of the different tools you will need, then sign up for our social ads training program today. All right, now let's look at the layout of publishing tools. You can see all your published posts here and your schedule posts here, but note that it may take a few minutes after you schedule a post for it to actually show up here. If you saved any posts as drafts and you're ready to come back to your drafts to finish them and schedule them, click to the drafts tab. And then lastly, you can see any posts you had set to expire in this last tab. Now, there are a lot of other tools on this page, a lot of which we've made separate videos on. For instance, a lot of these link out to Creator Studio. If you scroll down, you can see a section for lead ad forms and instant articles and Facebook shops. 
I also have an extensive guide to Facebook pages in general, so I'll link all of those videos in the description if you want a deeper dive into all of that. But for this video, I just wanted to focus on the basic publishing tools because they are a more straightforward feature for new business owners trying to get a handle on scheduling their Facebook and Instagram content in advance for the first time. In fact, comment below and let me know if you knew these tools existed for free with your Facebook page or not prior to watching this video. All right, so now let's move on to the best practices for posting on Facebook and Instagram using Facebook's publishing tools. Tip number one is to use hashtags and keywords. If you've seen any of my Instagram updates videos over the past year, then you know Instagram has launched search functions. Meaning as a user, I no longer have to type in hashtag marketing to find posts about marketing. I can just type in the word marketing. Now, does this mean hashtags are outdated? No, you can and should still use use hashtags to get that extra organic reach, you just need to use them in conjunction with keyword search. So for example, if you're a restaurant owner and you want your post to appear when someone searches seafood restaurant, then your caption needs to contain the words seafood restaurant in it and you can include seafood restaurant as a hashtag after your caption. And on that note, let's talk a little bit more about what your captions should say with tip number two, which is to make your captions audience oriented. So what do I mean by this? It means when you're making your captions, make sure you're addressing your target market by their needs and desires, as opposed to just talking about your company. I've shared several examples of this throughout a lot of my videos, but for some of my newer viewers, here's another quick example. Let's say you own a lawn service company. Your captions might focus more on how your lawn care treatments are safe for kids and pets, but tough on weeds, instead of focusing on how you guys use the latest model equipment. See the difference? You want to use your captions to address things your audience actually cares about as it relates to their goals and pain points and your business. All right, so that covers the copy. Now let's talk a little bit more about best practices for the creatives with tip number three, use video when you can. You always hear that video is the way of the future, but to be more specific, it's the way to make future sales. 64% of consumers make a purchase after watching branded social videos, and consumers who specifically end up on an e-commerce site through a user-generated video are 184% more likely to purchase and spend 45% more. There's many reasons why video works, but here are just a few. Videos are attention grabbing by nature. They deliver your message and value in a quicker way that's easier for the user to consume and understand as opposed to reading large chunks of text. And videos usually retain your audience's attention after getting it, thus creating a foundation for brand recall and consumer brand trust. When you're publishing your video, be sure to apply everything we just talked about for captions in the video description to further entice people to watch your video and make it easily searchable. You'll also wanna take advantage of Facebook's auto captions feature. There was one study of US consumers that found that 92% view videos with the sound off on mobile and that 80% of consumers are more likely to watch an entire video when captions are available. So because of this, Facebook has started automatically generating captions for your video for you. The only catch is that they're not always 100% accurate. So if you want to learn how to fix and double check the captions for your video, be sure to check out my video on how to get more Facebook video views. And then the last thing you need to know about publishing videos is to use strategic thumbnails. You can either pick a screenshot from your video to use as the thumbnail, or you can create one using a free program like Canva. Jelly has a great video on creating thumbnails in Canva, so I'll link that below as well for you to watch next. All right, and then moving on to my last tip, tip number four, which is if you can't use video, use taller images. The taller the image, the more space it will take up in that person's feed. And the more real estate you consume on the feed, the better chance you have to grab your audience's attention and stand out among the many posts they're seeing when they're scrolling down their feed. And if your image has text on it, or if it's an infographic, the same principles apply here from when we were talking about the captions. Make sure your images are audience centered as well. All right, now the last thing I wanna quickly talk about before we wrap up is how to use Facebook publishing tools on mobile. Because if you just try to publish or schedule posts through the regular Facebook app, you'll find that the tools are not there. 
And sometimes as a business owner, if you don't have somebody else handling your content for you, you need to be able to get some of this stuff scheduled on the go or in your spare time where a phone is handier than a computer. So you'll want to download the Creator Studio from Facebook app, which allows you to publish and schedule posts in advance or the Facebook Business Suite is another alternative to access these tools on the go. All right, you guys, that about wraps up everything I have for you today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next episode.